Hello everyone. In this video, the key features of Open Daylight VTN project integration with Microsoft SCBMM will be demonstrated. The key features in this demonstration are the live migration feature of Hyper-V that lets movement of running virtual machines from one failover cluster node to a cluster in the same node. Then flexible path control mechanism in OpenFlow networks is provided to Microsoft Hyper-V environments via the Open Daylight SDN controller. Path policy feature is implemented in VTN Manager. The software and tools required for this demonstration are Microsoft SCBMM server that is running with VSM provider for Open Daylight installed and configured. Windows server that has the Hyper-V enabled and configured as a cluster. In each of the Hyper-V, PF1000 virtual switch has been installed which provides the open flow capability. A server running with ODL which is a Helium version with VTM enabled and a Linux server that is running as the VTM coordinator. The topology used in this demo is two Hyper-V servers H1 and H2 with PS1000 virtual switch. Three open flow switches simulated using Mininet and connected to the Hyper-V. 5 VMs hosted using SCBMM. There are two servers, one is a video server and second one is a Hyperf server. Two video clients named video client 1 and video client 2 streaming video from the video server. One more client, Hyperf client connected to the Hyperf server. NIC teaming has been enabled in both the Hyper-V servers to connect either in the OpenFlow network. The topology as read by the ODL controller is shown in the ODL GUI. For this demonstration, a video will be streamed to Video Client 1 and Video Client 2 via the OpenFlow network from the video server. The path taken by the video traffic to the Video Client 1 is Video Server OFS1 Switch 1 OFS2 Video Client 1. And the path taken by the video traffic to the Video Client 2 is Video Server OFS1 and Video Client 2. Fireworks video is used for this demonstration. On the top left is the Video Client 1 console showing the video streamed from the video server. On the bottom left is the Video Client 2 console showing the video streamed from the video server. On the right side is the SCBM GUI with two Hyper V's H1 and H2. In H1 we have the video server iperf server and video client 2 it's already created similarly in the h2 iperf client and video client 1 are created additional traffic is added to the network path ofs1 switch1 one, and ofs2 by sending traffic from iperf server to iperf client to create congestion in the path this makes the video quality stream to video client 1 deteriorate Additional data traffic is sent from iperf server to iperf client by enabling the iperf client. This additional data traffic also takes the default path which deteriorates the video quality that is streamed to video client 1 on the top left side. The first feature demonstrated is the live migration feature. Hyper-V live migration moves running virtual machines from one physical server to another with no impact on virtual machine availability to users. The video server present in server H1 will be migrated to server H2 without impacting the video streaming to clients video client 1 and video client 2. Migrating the video server will not hamper the streaming of the video packets to both the video clients. Just the path through which these packets are streamed changes. Now the video server is migrated from H1 Hyper-V to H2 Hyper-V. After migration, the video packets to Video Client 1 are streamed through OFS2 in the Hyper-V H2. This video packets to the Video Client 2 are streamed through OFS2, Switch 1 and OFS1. As a result of this live migration, the video quality of client 1 is improved and the quality of client 2 is deteriorated. Using the SCBMM GUI, 
demonstration of the live migration will be shown. First right click the video server and select the migrate VM option. Then the destination host has to be selected and the migration is initiated. Now that we can see that the live migration process has been initiated and is now under progress. We can now observe that the live migration process is about to be completed. Once the migration is successfully completed, it can be seen that the quality of video in Video Client 1 present in H2 has improved considerably, whereas the video in the Video Client 2 in the host H1 has been deteriorated as these video packets are traversing through the congestion path. The migration of the video server is reflected in the controller GUI. It is now present in the Hyper-V H2 with the OFS 2. The second feature demonstrated in this video is the flexible path policy feature. Path policy feature implements user-defined cost-based packet routing. It can specify the cost of using specific switch link. We require three APIs for enabling path policy. Flow condition, path map, path policy, Please refer the video in the below link that explains in detail about the VTN path policy features. By default, both the video and the IPOF traffic takes the shortest path that is the OFS1 to switch1 to OFS2. Application of the path cost in the topology is shown with an illustration here. Before the path policy is applied, the default cost of 100 is applied to all the paths. The video traffic takes the shortest path that is OFS2 to switch1 to OFS1. Once the path policy is applied, the cost between OFS2 to switch1 to OFS1 becomes 1 million and the cost between OFS2 to switch2 to switch2 to switch3 and switch3 to OFS1 continues to be the default cost 100. After the application of path policy, the video traffic takes the low cost path that is OFS2 to switch 2 to switch 3 to OFS 1 where the total cost of the path is 300. By applying the path policy, the video traffic takes the different path from the IPOF traffic which results in the improvement of the video quality of client 2. I will show you this now. Let's configure the APIs to enable path policy. In flow condition, we need to configure the flow information for which path policy should be applied. For this demo, we have configured the flow details between the video server and video client 2. The flow details configured in flow condition API are the name video stream ethernet type, source MAC address and destination MAC address of the flows. Once we are done with the flow information, we send it and successfully complete it. Next, using path policy, we can define the cost for different paths in the OpenFlow network. The path policy details configured are the policy ID, default cost and the cost for each link in the switches in the network. For this demo, the policy ID is 1, the default cost is configured as 100. The cost between OFS1 to switch1 to OFS2 is configured as 1 million. Now that we save the car path policy information and we commit it and we can see it is successfully created. Finally, the path map is configured to map the flow condition and the path policy. For this demo, we map the flow condition video stream with the path policy 1. Once the configuration is successfully applied, the quality of the video stream to video client 2 on the bottom left has been dramatically improved. Using the coordinated web app, we can verify the flow path. 
the video traffic flows between video server and video client 2 are switched to the low cost path that is from OFS 2 to switch 2 to switch 3 to OFS 1. The video traffic flows between video server and video client 1 continues to flow through OFS 2. The other data flows between the IPERF server and the IPERF client continue to take the earlier path that is from OFS 2 to switch 1 to OFS 1. By this we have demonstrated the live migration and the flexible path policy features supported by Open Daylight VTN project integration with Microsoft SCVMM. Thank you for watching this video.